tonight's program. Our speaker tonight is Walter Bachman, Walt to his many friends. He is a member of the Archival Society and he is one of the indispensable staff at the Ritter Library. As a child, Walt uh, attended many camps and later on conferences at the Beulah Beach community. And uh, later, uh, he became a resident and has been for the last 35 years. Younger members of his family still attend conferences and camps there, and his family members have been using the same house there for five generations. In 2021, the Beulah Beach community will celebrate its centennial. And since 2000, Walt and a number of other people have been gathering information, doing research, finding photographs, building display cases uh, at, in 2021 to celebrate the centennial. And in fact, I believe there are several people who are collaborating on a, uh, a book that will be published. We have a number of guests here who are residents or friends of the Beulah Beach community. Welcome. And we, uh, we are excited to have you here. And I think it would be, it'll be fun to have you participate in, in, in the discussion. And Walt tells me we have some photographs that have never been shown before there might be some that you have not seen before. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Walt Bachman. Thank you. The first picture I had Paul pull up here. This is from Google Maps. If you drive west of town, go around a curve, you come to the sign that says Beulah Beach. Then you see a bunch of trees. And for many of you, you've wondered what goes on behind those trees. <laughs> Candy, yesterday, for the first time in her life, drove through Beulah Beach to see what goes on there. I don't know what she saw going on, but you saw lots of buildings that you may not have expected. Paul, what do we do now to go to my slideshow? Put the furthest to the right down sign. Oh, this? Ha ha. Now I'm. Slideshow? Slideshow, good. This is the earliest welcome sign I have found. I say welcome because it says private, as if you're not allowed to come in. <laughs> now how do I go to the next one? Tap the screen. This one also says private beach. Whoops, I didn't want to do that. Back up, back up. <laughs> yep. Oh, good. I know how to do that. It says Bible and Missionary Conference Grounds of the Christian Missionary Alliance. Down in a little oval, it says Private Beach. When I went to college, I met a lot of people. One from Bellevue, is that what's over here? And I said, I've, Belleville? Which one's over here by Sandusky? Bellevue. Bellevue. I said, well, I go to Beulah Beach in the summer. That's near where you live. And she asked, isn't that a nudist camp? <laughs> I asked, no, why do you think that? Well, it says private beach. I asked, did you miss all the bit about Bible and missionary conference grounds of the Christian <laughs> Missionary Alliance? She said, yes, I did. <laughs> private beach may also keep you from driving in. This one says private property, residents and guests only. We still don't want you to show up. This one doesn't say private grounds. Finally, you might think you're able to drive in. Yeah. This one doesn't say private beach. Good, come on in. Well, let's go in. Oh, snow. snow. You're not surprised to see snow, are you? Anyone recognize the first house on the right? Yeah, the people who live in that house are here. Now, there's a house on the right with three windows. Anyone know who house, whose house that is? Yep, yes, yes. More snow. This could be someone who would meet you there. No, he's not. He died before Beulah Beach started in 1921. He's the founder of the denomination, the Christian Missionary Alliance. I heard that he spoke at Vermillion. Oh, you're, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> he did preach in Vermillion. Now, do you want to guess where? 
He did preach at Linwood, yes. That's all right. Very good. <laughs> Something else about Linwood Park. This part of the United States is the original district organized for the Christian Missionary Alliance. Its organizational meeting was at Linwood Park also. We have several connections there. This lady may have greeted you there. She's one of the famous missionaries in the denomination. I remember when she spoke there. She spent most of her missionary career as a uh, missionary to Japan. If you notice the brooch on the right, on her left, that was given to her by the Emperor of Japan because she stayed during World War II and helped the citizens. Here's someone else who might have greeted you there. Famous theologian in the middle of the century. Some of you may know his name. He did preach there, but he's dead. He won't greet you there anymore. But his books live on, yeah, oh, indeed, yes. This man may have met you there, too. He helped move the Alliance here in 1921. It was there various times throughout the years. There's now H.E. Nelson III, who was my neighbor, and he graduated with Janet Ford from Vermilion High School, a local connection. We do not have those telephones any longer. This is also maybe a welcoming committee. Some of you are sitting in this group picture. This happened several years ago. These were people who were teens in the 1950s, and they came back for a happy reunion to say, do you remember when so-and-so did such and such? They're not sitting there tonight if you were to go out, but that is a place where some of them met their spouses when they were going on dates as teenagers. This is the main reason people come to Beulah Beach, or did, the tabernacle. It was part of the farm, it was one of the barns, it held about a thousand people for meetings until only a few years ago when it was replaced. Lots of things have gone on in that building. Lovely wooden shutters. A couple have been preserved. They're now bulletin boards in the new, new building. This is what goes on inside. What went on, on inside. Um, lots and lots of services. This happens to be a missionary rally. If you look carefully down in the right hand corner, a man's holding his head in his hands. Those of you from Beulah Beach, do you recognize him at all? Not Reverend Clark next to him, but the far one on the right. His wife might have been here tonight, but she's not. That's Woody Stemple. Yes. One of our missionaries speaking there. I think that's one of the Patterson sisters. Notice the signs with the logos. I'll tell you more about those later. We even prayed in the building. All those flags are designated countries where we've had Alliance missionaries. And also, Ruth Anna Turner's had, had a rummage sale in there at one time. <laughs> Not her rummage sale. It, was, yeah. it wasn't only Ruth Anna's stuff that was put on sale. There have been children's services over the years. If you see a tent behind, that's because they used to meet in a tent for their service. Some of you will recognize the name Uncle D Charlie. He's in the middle of all those children. Another children's meeting outside the ta tabernacle, and they had some fun games also, playing races. It wasn't all spiritual. Well, now, what is Beulah Park, you ask? In the mid eight, I'm glad you asked. In the mid 1880s, this started on the other side of Cleveland. When it was sold in 1920, and we moved here, it became part of Euclid Beach Amusement Park. The Reverend Nelson I showed you was the district superintendent over there, and his son told me when he was a little boy, he'd be put to bed in his tent and his parents would go to the evening service. Then he would leave his tent, go look at the parents in the evening service, and he could see the lights of the rides over at Euclid Beach Amusement Park. Notice the tents. Yes, there was a hotel there. Some man with his boys nicely dressed for a service. Modest bathing suits. Modest is still our word for bathing apparel, but not quite that modest today. What does the word Beulah mean? It comes from the Old Testament. God said he would no longer call this land desolate or deserted, but now he would call it Beulah because you'll be married to me, God. And there have been a couple gospel songs and a hymn that dwell with Beulah land, and usually in those songs it means we're looking toward our home in heaven. Now, if I like the tabernacle, is there a place to eat? Oh, yes, there are people lined up to eat. Let's go join them. This is a building built in 1960, the present, present food service building. 
Lovely two stories, lots of windows looking out onto Lake Erie. Hopefully you like the food and the view. Oh look, a clean floor, must be a good place to eat. <laughs> yes. Oh, maybe they're expecting us, they're balloons. No, there are all kinds of things that go on at Beulah Beach and we'll hear about some of those later. This is one of the special events, not if we were to walk in. I don't know if I want to eat there with cowboys. <laughs> that was a theme for some event. Don't worry, the people who usually go in there aren't cowboys. Sometimes fancy desserts made by some retreat group. Sometimes a contest. This is a group of ladies from another church. I don't think they were there to sing, but I said that because maybe they'll come and sing at your table. All kinds of activities come to Beulah Beach. Well now, where do we want to stay? We went to a service. We found a place to eat. See any place there to stay? This, these are the early days of Beulah Beach. Not many houses then. Yes, it's back there. You can't see it very well. It's behind the, the Vogler Meyer house. Oh, more snow. Up in the right-hand corner, you see a building. This is the first time I ever saw this building when I scanned this photo. One of my sources said, oh, that used to be one of the public restrooms. You'll hear from that source later. Maybe he'll verify that or not. Still, you may not want to stay there in the snow. Ah, uh, a hotel. That sounds impressive. This was built in time for the 1921 convention. Still in operation, been renovated a couple times. Has what, 50 some rooms? Mm hmm. 60, thank you. Can look pretty good. It used to be two tone. Now it has nice siding. Oh, more snow. <laughs> you see one of my sub themes going on here. Oh, look, it looks pretty fancy now, and it's called the Lake For Lakeshore Lodge. What's it look like? In oh, there's a porch there, too. And there's a pretty good-sized porch, for, again, for lake viewing. Sit there and watch the waves go by. One room? Well, more than one room, but I'm only showing you one room. Is there a door to the bathroom? No, oh, no, they're down the hall. Let me tell you about the restrooms in the hotel. It depends on what kind of group is meeting there. They can be all women's restrooms, they can be all men's restrooms, or they can be half and half. The signs are reversible or flexible. Isn't that handy? <laughs> Another building, Bethany Hall. It was built shortly after the hotel was built. Looks pretty good there. In its earlier days, it was all white. Fire escape. Wooden fire escape. At least there's a fire escape. Rooms are more rustic than in the hotel and the bathrooms are down the hall. Um, showers were installed a few years ago. Cabins, oh, there are little one-room cabins. They were new in 1938. <laughs> yes, yeah, some people want little houses now. You might notice along the top row, there are black lines over the door. They all had a name for a Bible city. Gaza, Jerusalem, Capernaum. Never saw Sodom or Gomorrah on any of the doors. <laughs> oh, and sometimes they need redone. There was a time when people could lease them for 10 years. The beach still owned them. People leased them and put on a porch brought in some of their own pots and pans for a week they wanted to stay there. If you go looking for that cabin, it's no longer there. It's been torn down. Or you could stay in a tent. I stayed. You stayed in a tent. I rarely see a tent anymore. I don't know if these were used for sleeping, so there are no sides on them. Oh, it's Eden Cook Place. Good, thank you. I think these are more fancy because they do have little walls so people don't see you sleeping. Maybe still hear you sleeping. They still do have tents during conference. Yes. These were put up by preachers and wives 
in the early days, they had to sometimes come and stuff mattresses with hay or put up the tents. You're shaking your head. Did you have to do that? Uh huh. We still have a living witness to that. <laughs> tents coming right up close to Lee and Nancy's house. I like this one. The man is making the fire. The lady's put on her apron to cook. And then notice the other lady off to the left. Fancy hat. That's not a chef's hat. That's probably a let's go to church meeting hat. And she still had it on for... Look at the car, yes. We don't have many of those there anymore. If you want to buy a piece of property there, you are then invited to an annual lessees meeting. There we are enjoying one of our annual lessees meeting. Yes, Nancy, you're on the far right. Are you there I am, yes. By the pole, yes. Oh, it's in the hotel basement for the annual lessees meeting. Where the, the beach tells us what they want us to hear. And then we, oh, yes, thank you very much. Who did that? <laughs> at one time, there was an institute at Beulah Beach from 1925 to 1932. Students came for two or three years. They lived in the hotel, had classes in the hotel, ate in the dining room in the basement of the hotel. This evening we have a son of maybe two people in that picture. Were they here in 1927? Yes, okay. We also have some display items over there from the Institute, including a, the registrar's report card for one of the students. If you take a look, please note the, note, the grading scale. Probably nothing like you had in school. We also have a diploma showing from one of the students who graduated from there, and his, her, her son lives at Beulah Beach also. Closed because of the depression, couldn't keep going. Never a large group, but a, oh, we also have some yearbooks from there, over there. Children's Camp, 1959, I've looked for myself, I couldn't find any child wearing glasses, maybe I'm not there. What to do when you go to children's camp, youth camp? That's one activity. Use those, whatever they're called. Swimming. Why not swim in Lake Erie? Doesn't everyone swim in Lake Erie from time to time? Sometimes an odd guest will appear. Look, I'll take this for Grandma. <laughs> Seaweed. Somebody doesn't look very happy holding the bag. Or dead fish. Oh, yes. From my home church in Akron, a boy brought home his suitcase at the end of a week at camp, and his mother said, you're wearing the same clothes you had on when you left home. I didn't change clothes. Why not? Oh, I don't know. She opened the suitcase. There was a dead fish in there. He would brought that home as a souvenir. <laughs> It ruined all the clothes and the suitcase. <laughs> There's a dress code for camps. This is not it. <laughs> Children put on Bible skits, and sheets come in very handy for biblical costumes. Or <laughs> take some of the vegetation and try to hide behind the trees. This is Noah, and I read on the back of the picture that he was going to name the animals. The sign on the person in the middle says, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. <laughs> Another odd guest at Beulah Beach. <laughs> hay rides. Now they have hay. They didn't used to. That's an upgrade to have hay. Still have, oh, straw. Thank you. You would know. You probably put it on the wagons. <laughs> or let's put on a parade for the residents. <laughs> camp directors. Well, three of them are camp directors. The one with all the hair isn't. Oh, the guy holding the book over here is Howard Nelson III. That's, that's how he chanted. Either ride a canoe or tip a canoe or bring it into the shore canoe. We used to have Chapel Creek that went out to Lake Erie. 
it's been moved. You'll hear a little more about that later. We had these lovely bridges we had to walk over, and the fun of the bridge was to shake it when the girls were going across. Sometimes dive off it, yes. Ah, I spent lots of time at this playground. A couple teeter-totter swings and a slide. The next building in the middle is a public shower house with restrooms, and off to the left is the tabernacle. Along the cliff. Not something that would probably hold many children who tried to jump off. Baptismal services. Lots and lots. They're still going on. A few people here from the Church of the Nazarene said their church went out from here in town. And lots of churches from Sandusky and Lorraine have had their own baptismal services out there. Mission statement. Kathy, are you going to show this? Oh, good. <laughs> this is why Beulah Beach exists. I think this was probably developed under your husband's leadership. Was it already here? Okay. Beulah Beach belongs to the Christian Missionary Alliance. The Alliance believes that Jesus is Savior, Sanctifier, Healer, and Coming King. And there's that logo again. Four emblems of representing Jesus. Now, in town is Harbor Town Community Church. It's part of this four-squared denomination. Their founder did a little studying under A.B. Simpson and came up with her own fourfold gospel. Jesus Christ is the Savior, baptizer with the Holy Spirit, healer, and soon coming king. And in town, we also have an Assembly of God Church. They're a Pentecostal group. Some of them split off from the Christian Missionary Alliance. They believe that they have the four core beliefs. Salvation, baptism in the Holy Spirit, divine healing, and the second coming of Christ. The two offshoots are probably better known than the main church, the Christian Missionary Alliance. Uh, why we come to Beulah Beach, one of the reasons for the view of the lake. Another view of the lake. I didn't show any with waves, but I can hear them at my house. Oh, there's something... Seniors used to do, play shuffleboard. And there is someone here tonight who's working on the beach, maybe having shuffleboard again. Or basketball in the old, old tabernacle. It was a multi-purpose building. Or a zip line. Maybe one of you would like to go on a zip line. There is a weight limit, but a lot of you would be under the weight limit, but you may be above the sanity age to go on it. <laughs> Next door, Peck's Cottages. You may remember the little general store. Beulah Beach now owns this building and the cottages. The building is now used for meetings of groups who stay in the cottages. This is before their pool. This is with their pool. And the pool is no longer there. To the east of us is Grand Harbor Condominiums. We used to own that. It was the East Plateau. There was one house there with a lady living on it. To the right of us is Mr. Brown's mansion, who has the patent on the drop ceiling. You could be our neighbor for $19.9 <laughs> That's the end of my slide presentation, but don't go away. There are two more speakers. The first one is Steve Armstrong. When I was a child, he lived down the street from me at Beulah Beach. He and his brother Scott have gone on to other things, and now Steve is back here half the year in his retirement. And since he's older than I am, he has different memories than I do. So, taking the VGA out of here, putting it here. Do I have to choose one of those? Uh, or is it going to automatic? Your computer. Windows when, PC. When, my, when, my, uh, when it fires up here. There we go. Okay. So um, I was going to talk about different changes that have taken place at uh, Beulah Beach. Now, one of the things that does not change is beautiful sunsets. <laughs> Now, it changes in the sense that there is a different one every night uh, when there is a sunset. 
but uh, it, it does always have beautiful sunsets. And you can see, uh, maybe you can see Cedar Point mm -hmm. right about in there. Good view of Cedar Point. Well, talking about change, found some uh, things about that. Maybe he says you can't have hope and change at the same time. Now, so when we did some changes at Beulah Beach, there was people who had that attitude, <laughs> but uh, they still come back. And here's a guy who's uh, he's got a prayer about change. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's too much, too close to home, isn't it? Okay, so where are we? And uh, this is a little bit uh, different uh, view of that. Uh, the sign that uh, he was, that green sign that he had. Whoops, hello. The green sign that he had would have been right about here. Okay, as you come down the hill, turn that corner. That's where that sign's going to be. So that's the. Uh, that, that's the Google Maps thing. Now, I want you to take a look at right here. That is the outline of the tabernacle, where it used to be. All right. Now, I'm going to the next one. This is a satellite view. Now, you see what's different there, and I'm going to go into that just a little bit more. So that's the center. It, it's a bigger footprint, and uh, then you can see some of the other things that are there. Okay. So this is an old-time view. I don't think you had this one, did you? Okay. So uh, the tabernacle is sort of an aerial view there, and the, the uh, hotel, Lakeview Lodge, and then some of the houses, and uh, some of the places where they had tents that you showed would have been, let's see, there would have been some tents in here, mm -hmm. tents in this lot here, mm -hmm. and I seem to remember that there was sometimes tents put up over here, but uh, on a windy storm came through, you were in trouble. <laughs> <coughs> All right, I want to talk about one of the most recent changes, and that's this tabernacle. It uh, had reached in the ripe old age of 90, and there was places, there was beams in the tabernacle that had rotted, and in fact, the big uh, vertical supports, you could take your keys and sort of stab them into some of those places, and it went in a little too far. But, uh, but they did have to have some things replaced just so that it would hold up when the wind came along. Uh, and so they decided to change that. Here's a uh, picture different from what uh, uh, Walt showed. Now, I don't remember this sidewalk here. Uh, I remember this, but I don't remember that. And I don't think it was drawn in. This is from the, probably about the late 40s, early 50s. And um, then this is uh, inside. They're having a, the teen camp or somebody's having a worship service. And you see the beams and something like that. That's not one of the beams that went bad, but, but uh, it was getting there. Um, this uh, is actually the demolition that took place. And uh, this is the best video I have of this. And it takes a couple minutes, but it's worth the wait. Yeah, it did. <laughs> we had been told that it was going to happen, it was going to happen. And one morning I heard lots of noise, and I thought, boy, they're moving them garbage cans loud. <laughs> and, and so I ran out there and said, oh, that's the tabernacle coming down. And so. Uh, I, I had my video camera with me and got some good video. And this is, it's coming up here, is the best part of the, the whole thing. There was some audio to this, but it was just the, the noise of the engine running on that thing. Okay, wait for it here. And, uh, and if you heard the audio, there were people cheered and clapped. It was <laughs> very exciting. Okay. Now, there, as we say, there's the, the new center, and it has a bigger footprint. And uh, a view here from the east. Okay. It's sort of actually southeast that I'm, uh, I'm standing, but that's the east uh, elevation of it. Uh, a little bit towards the north. So I'm looking sort of... Uh, uh, west and a little bit south. And then here's from out on the lake. And they just got this cross in uh, this, this winter. And uh, so from the lake, it's, and I understand there's going to be a light on it so that at night it, it'll, it'll see, be seen. Now, you can see the two stories there. And so there are upstairs rooms and more than just a, a, um, a large gathering room for, for camps and, and conferences, things like that. There are other rooms for, 
uh, smaller activities. Uh, as again, here's the picture of the uh, inside of the old one, and it's going to fade here. And there is the inside of the new one. State-of-the-art lighting, state-of-the-art uh, audio and video. Uh, some of you wonder, how do the singers know the words? Do you see right there? People on the platform can see the words to the songs up here. So, uh, and, and by the way, the, probably the place where someone was standing to take this picture was about the same as the previous picture. Okay, and the, the stage is on the north side of the building rather than on the west side of the building. So sitting in the audience, you look out and you can see the lake, although if there's a sunset and it's bright, they do have shades that come down. And uh, it's very well insulated in a lot of ways. Uh, we had a, um, Glad, I think, was the, the group sang a couple years ago. And it was right in the middle of a big thunderstorm, crash, bang, boom, and rain. And I think I just barely heard one crash of thunder, and it was well insulated. Uh, also, notice, whoops, well, notice too much noticing here. Okay, we'll start with that. Uh, look right here, across this line, right about there behind the soundboard, uh, there's a large uh, foldable doors that come out and make two separate things. So you can have a service going on on one end, and then this end here is a gym floor. And so you can have sports uh, going on at the same time as a meeting in the other room. And the folks, the folks that built it, they said they tried it out. They, they uh, got the sound going real loud in the other room. We came in here, and you could hardly hear it. So they, they've done some good acoustical work for that. It has a nice, real nice gym floor. Uh, you can have basketball courts going a full court uh, one way, and then two, double court, two half courts the other way. And uh, you can also set up for uh, volleyball. Uh, either one, one net for a large game or two nets for if you want two games going on at the same time. Pretty cool. Now, <clears throat> Rich Tarrant had this picture on his website some years ago. And uh, he was saying how neat it looked and so on. But he says, I can't remember where the hill was that this was taken from, the vantage point. And I emailed him back and I says, that's not the hill. That's the top of the tabernacle. They're on the roof of the tabernacle. And if you look, whoops, I keep hitting the. This is the roof of the tabernacle in the corner of the picture. I'm going across there. All right? Now, uh, there are several houses and buildings that you can still see today. So over there on the left is the hotel. And that's circled at the top there. OK? And then this house here, it's bigger now, but it's there. Okay, that's this one. And then this house here, that's your, your house, you know, is that one. This house is there, and it's actually one of the older cabins and hardly used, as it turns out. This house is there. That's the last one on the right there. So those, those things are there and still recognizable. And then recently on the website, they posted this video of an overflight. They have a drone with a camera. And they flew over, the, uh, over this. It's just music in the background, so we're not missing anything there. Uh, I'm amazed at how flat it looks. I mean, there's places I know that there, there's ups and downs to the streets. And even when you get over to the other side, um, where there's campground down at a lower level, it doesn't look that way. Now, coming up. Right there in the bottom right-hand corner is, is our house. <laughs> right there, just to show that. Keep going, yeah. Stopped. There he is. Oh, we're going to see it again. <laughs> oh, well. If you didn't see it the first time. Walter, there's your house. There's Close by there. Is that you? Oh, your neighbor, OK. There's a new swimming pool. Yeah, notice that, because uh, I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. Athletic field's over there. Kingston, Kingston uh, Residence is over there. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Now, down below, uh, all those cabins in a row, some of those are the same cabins he showed you. Down there, that row that, that's there. Here's uh, your get to view the center. Also, the um, food service building he showed you. Yes, it's a water slide. It's 
going to come back across the, the lake shore now. It's going to switch views. The water was high that day when they took that picture. And he will take, right at the very end, you're going to see the cross again on the, uh, on the center. All right, that was a cool video. Okay, uh, as, as uh, Walter mentioned, the uh, food service is, was at the, in the basement of the hotel, the Lakeview Lodge now. And so uh, that got old, and I remember eating down there when I was oh, maybe middle school, and it always smelled musty, uh, and it, it was not exactly state-of-the-art anymore. So they built uh, the new food, we called it the food service building when it first was built, now it's called Lakeshore Commons. That's the location. Uh, that's the back, or the front, depending on how you think of it. He, he showed you a picture of people lined up there, and this is a little bit different view. Upstairs is mainly dining area. Downstairs is a snack shop area, although if there's overflow in the dining, you can, you can go downstairs. Um, then a little bit about the uh, changes in the lake front. Now, he showed you a nice view of a bridge that I remember. This is a bridge I don't remember. It was before my time. But uh, this is uh, where the, the, the lake was, or the, the creek was. And I'm gonna, the next slide I'm going to show you is taken from that spot, and we're going to be looking out towards the lake. Okay? Now, there was a sewage pipe that ran across there. I don't think when I lived, I grew up there, um, that it was being used anymore. Uh, it would go to a little sewage treatment station and then go out into the lake. That was the state of the art in those days, okay? <laughs> the, uh, the little footbridge that was there, it, there was a bigger one than when I was a kid. And uh, there would be people that would try to walk the pipe. David, did you do that? Did you ever walk the pipe? Some of my friends did. Your friends did. <laughs> you did? Yeah, all right, ready to go. Uh, then the footbridge, and I, I remember uh, some of us would dive off that footbridge. Now, it sort of depend on what, what had happened that year as to far as the, was the creek actually running or was it clogged up and so on. Um, now, of course, now that's the way the creek would flow. Now, of course, there is no pipe, there is no footbridge. Uh, it's they have filled it in, and the creek is supposed to exit right there. I, I glanced as I drove in tonight, and it is open after all of that rain we had. And here's a different view of it, different angle. Um, the reason it got changed was apparently the, the, in the flood of 1969, that footbridge got clobbered. Is, is, that, is that right? I, that's what I understood. I wasn't here then. I put at the beginning of the slides that I was a resident since 1951. Well, I've come and gone, went to college in Minnesota and went overseas a while, but uh, still, you know, Beulah Beach runs in my blood. So um, somewhere along the line, once that footbridge was down, they said, well, it's all, it's all uh, you know, filled in from one, some time, and so let's, uh, let's open this up here. So I think they went down there with a backhoe and just, just opened it up. Now, the Corps of Engineers came along and says, what? What did you do that for? You know, it's one of those deals, it's easier to say I'm sorry than to get permission. <laughs> and uh, uh, one of the times when this was clogged up like you saw here, okay, um, it, it, was, it was clogged up down there where it used to go, and it had, uh, I guess, been clogged up most of the summer, and there had been rain, and so the, the level of the creek was a little bit higher, or significantly higher than that of the lake. So some kids got it, just little kids, they get out there and with their little sand shovels and dug a little trench like this. In an hour and a half, the thing was, you know, 15 feet wide and rolling. And uh, very exciting. Now, it was nice when it was open because uh, some of the families would have boats that we would dock in here. My dad had a little tiny dock and we'd park the boat up in here. Other people would just pull the boat in on the, up their boat in up the sand. And uh, it was nice to be able to go in and out. Um, there have been some changes in the sports fields. Now, uh, that's where the sports fields are. And if you wanted to go across to the sports field, you had to cross the highway. Um, at the time, there was a road here that went back across the highway. 
and there was some other things, uh, you know, there was ball diamonds and, and uh, volleyball nets and what have you. Uh, by the way, uh, here's the, where the, the pool is. I'm going to come back to that later. But you had to cross the highway. Well, it's a fairly busy highway. If you're going to take 150 kids across, you know, you, you, uh, there's some liability there. So what they would do, they would get everybody up, crowded up as close as they could. They had a, they, a white line across there. And they would line them up, pack them in there, and then they would send somebody up the highway this way to kind of with a portable stop sign and a flashing light or something and, and um, send back and say, yes, it's okay, nobody coming, and they'd blow the whistle and everybody hurry across. And then uh, a few years back, you may remember that they replaced this bridge over Chapel Creek. And so at the time, uh, they asked the state or whoever was doing this, could you put, fix it so that we could have a, a pathway underneath here? And so they configured it so they could. Uh, it was up to Beulah Beach to put cement down there, make a nice path, and, and so on. So that's how they get to the, the athletic fields now. And they don't have the, the problem of going, uh, going across the, the highway. Uh, swimming is a big deal. Lakefront activity is always fun. But the lake isn't always a fun place to be. It might be rough like it was uh, last week. It might be dirty. Uh, you know, they go around and put, uh, somebody come and tests the water, and it might be nasty. And so, uh, you need, but even, even when it's nice, you need a place to dive. Sometimes you could off that pier. They never did want you to do that in camp. Uh, so they built a raft, and I think uh, Walt had a slide of this too. Uh, my dad was, uh, helped build that raft, or the first one. I think there was probably uh, maybe three or four incarnations of that raft. Uh, Eight 55-gallon drums and some lumber and some creosote. And uh, I think later on they had nice indoor-outdoor carpet on the top there so you wouldn't get splinters. That was fun. Uh, they did have a pool, and, and Walt showed you a picture of that at Pex Cottages. When we acquired Pex Cottages, they did use the pool. However, it was built in the 60s. I remember riding the school bus past that. Uh, and, and seeing this, the pool there uh, when I was uh, in high school. And uh, so it was old, and uh, just like me. And uh, it, it got to be, I think they were using, losing hundreds if not thousands of gallons of water a week, if I remember the numbers right. Well, that's, that gets old. And so uh, they, they uh, did have a fun drive, and they raised the uh, money for a nice pool. You saw where it is. It's on, on the other side of the highway. And it's, it's a nice situation. I think it's especially nice for the day camp kids who are there every day, every day, every day. And you have a nice place to go for them to swim. You might send uh, the uh, resident camps who are staying in the hotel down to the, uh, to the beach if it's nice. Or, and then these kids have this at a certain hours. And you just range the schedule so it, so it works nice. So that's, that's nice. Um, sort of finish things up here. Uh, sort of talking about the... Uh, uh, the reason Mule Beach exists. Uh, there used to be an old locomotive belt, and I, I'm not entirely sure if it's a locomotive belt. That's the story I remember hearing. Uh, and it hung on there on the back corner of the tabernacle, and it was used to signal it was time to come to the meeting. And so during conference or during camp, when it was time for the meeting, somebody would go out there and ring the bell. And uh, also, uh, somebody else told me that uh, if it was a curfew, you know, lights out time, they'd come and ring the bell, says, you know, 11 o'clock, you know, you're supposed to be in your place. And so uh, it, uh, it, was, it was there and, and something I remember. And I remember being up the hill on US 6 there and hearing it all the way back that way. So it could be heard a long ways away. Now, uh, there were other things that the bell got used for. <laughs> it got decorated, depending on what school you rooted for, uh, where you were from. Uh, of course, you know, next week the, the fans from up north would uh, decorate it, to, you know, maize and blue. Um, towards the, uh, before they ended all of that, uh, it got to be there was so much paint on there that it didn't ring, it'd go clunk. <laughs> and um, the other thing that happened is that it was a traditional plank. The young people would, in the night, in the middle of the night, uh, in the early morning hours, go out there and ring it and then run like crazy. We won't mention any names, but his initials are Dave Baines. <laughs> and he, he, well, actually, the guy who's the director right now, he, he confessed, you know, publicly, yes, he did that. And uh, so it's, 
and proud of it, I'm sure. <laughs> so uh, they've changed uh, the place, and they've also changed the tradition. Uh, now it stands outside the uh, center there. You see they've got a frame that it, it hangs in. And they've also changed the uh, tradition. Now, uh, if young people, and I guess uh, adults as well, depending on the, the situation, they make a decision for Christ, make some sort of spiritual decision, they will share their testimony and ring the bell to mark the occasion, and they're known as bell ringers. And uh, last year, maybe you're going to tell this, 800-some? Uh, 900, 60. Okay, so that many bell ringers last, last year. And uh, it's neat. And that, that's the whole purpose of Beulah Beach. Uh, you saw the, the uh, admission statement. Uh, but uh, that people would make new steps with the Lord, sometimes a pro profession of faith original, or sometimes uh, just getting right with the Lord, or sometimes being called to be a missionary, called to be a pastor, or something like that. So that, that's the whole purpose. Now, any questions? Then you can address the questions to any of us. Yes? Okay, I don't know anything about the beach, but my question was, uh, when did the first uh, Beach Church 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 It's owned by the Christian Missionary Alliance. However, other groups can come and rent areas on the grounds. And now we have enough uh, places for it to put people as well as let them have their services that you can have three, four, five groups at a time, depending on the size. And uh, there's a big group that comes in every year from Napanee, uh, Indiana, is it? And uh, a missionary church. Um, I was looking at who was, who was there recently, and it was a power lifting group that was, <laughs> I don't know what they were doing. I, I, Trying to find out who they were, but just out of curiosity. But, uh, but just all kinds of things. But the, the campgrounds is owned and run by the Christian Mission Alliance, but they will rent out the facilities uh, to other groups. And that's all one denomination that Alliance has one group. Yes. Yes. And if you're curious about, the, you know, what's the theology, pretty close to Southern Baptists. Uh, you know, I. Emphasis on missions, big emphasis on missions. Yeah, the, the, where he was talking about was that the other, they also have a fourfold gospel of some sort and very similar, just different words that get used to represent the same, the same concepts. Other questions? Okay, uh, Ms. Trainer is going to come and share with us. Kathy Trainer works in the beach office. Not a simple job does she have. She will tell you what her job title is and what she does in that job. I will only throw in that she's married to the man who confessed to ringing the bell when he was a young person. <laughs> we don't know anything about that, do we? Right there? There you go. And you can use the arrow keys. I will do that. Well, I just loved listening to all of this. I don't really always know all the history that comes um, with Beulah Beach, and my heart is full just looking and seeing, you know, what has happened since 1921 or even before then. And really, for me, it's seeing God at work back then and knowing that he's still at work today. And so they ask if I would share a little bit about what I do and really What's going on behind those trees today? Um, so I am, uh, I work in the office. I'm the director of guest services. So as they mentioned, we do run our own camps and then I'll talk a little bit more. We do run out to outside groups. Those are the people that I mostly work with, um, any outside group. But I wanna tell you a little bit about what happens at Beulah Beach. There. This year we have overnight camps. Every year we do, um, all summer long. And this year our theme is the secret agent. And we're talking to them about being ambassadors for Christ, that he has sent us out into the world. So we will have camps this summer, overnight camps, for kids from age 7 to about 18. 
course, they, oops, they come in different groups. They don't all come at the same time. So we'll have a seven and eight year old camp and then we'll have high school camp. We'll have splash camp. They'll do lots of things on the water. Um, we have things like paintball and ropes courses and rock walls. Um, this is not the camp that I went to when I went to camp years ago. Um, a lot of fun. Um, we hire um, about 100 college students every summer and they join our staff and every January we start out and we send our team out. They go to universities and interview. We interview all of the applicants. Usually get about 150 to 160 applications and then hire 100 students to come work at the camp as counselors and running all the activities. Um, they will be coming in a few weeks, so we are gearing up to get ready. My husband always says one of our favorite days of the year is when our staff comes, and then the next favorite is when they all go home. <laughs> so this is our summer camps, and those will start mid-June, and then they will end the first week in August. And so we'll just run, they run from a Sunday afternoon to a Friday afternoon, Parents bring their kids on Sunday and they're greeted and then they pick them up on Friday. And we have them the rest of the time. I will say I think those who live here, living there, you would think it would be crazy, but it's not. Um, sometimes you forget there's even campers there because they're so busy and out doing things. We also run a day camp and through that we service about a thousand children that come from the area here. And that runs for 10 weeks. It averages around 100 kids a week that come. And they come about 7.30 in the morning, and we, they have breakfast there, they play all day, and they go home about 5 o'clock at night. And they do that, yeah, they eat lunch too. <laughs> and and uh, they come and experience camp for the day. And that is all for grade school children here in the area. So if you have any grandchildren, it's a great place for them to come. We also take what we call Beulah on the Road, and this is taking camp to a church. We have seven churches this year where we will take a staff of around 20 people, and they will take camp to a church. They'll be going to Cleveland churches, to some in Toledo, to some in Marion, Ohio. And they take camp to the church because not everyone can come to camp. And so they, in essence, will run a day camp. They'll come early in the morning and stay till supper and run camp at the church. We'll take our rock wall there. We'll take all our bouncy houses. So they do lots of fun things, but also we'll be a part of the secret agent program. Um, this is probably, for me, one of the highlights of our summer. One week out of the summer is our, we call it now, BMC. And that stands for Bible and Missionary Conference. And that really is one of the very first things, correct, that Beulah Beach um, was for. And so this year, you all are invited to come. There is no conference fee. There's nothing you have to sign up for. You just show up. And there will be Bible classes in the mornings and speakers in the evening, um, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, there's two nights, there are concerts. On Sunday night, the 23rd, I don't know if you all know David Phelps, he's with the Gaithers, and he will be coming to give a concert. Yes, of July. I can hardly wait. He's one of my favorites. Um, love to hear him sing quite a few hymns. So he'll be there, and if you want, there, that is a ticketed event. It's $10 for a ticket, and if you just call the office or come stop by, you can buy a ticket. But anything that week is available for you to come to. Now, for all of these things, I do have brochures out there on the table. You're welcome to pick up anything you want, and there is a brochure that talks about Bible and Missionary Conference. Next, we have family camps, and this is usually a, a five-day event where families come and they have the adventure of having a week of camp together as a family. Um, and then we'll have a weekend with a single-parent family camp where mom will bring her kids or dad will bring his kids for the weekend. 
and that will be in August. Um, <clears throat> every spring we have our Align Conference. That's a mother-daughter conference where moms and daughters come, get away, and just make memories together. And if we do one for the mother-daughters, we have to do one for fathers and sons, and that's in the fall. My son actually is coming back. This was my son was our program director for years and then got married and moved away. And they recently moved back to the area and he just said, I loved the father-son retreat. Can I please come back and just direct that one camp? Okay. Yep. And so he's coming back and that really is one of his favorite because he just loved spending time with his father and the two of them really growing in their relationship with one another and the Lord. Then here's our newest. This is called Beauty for Ashes. There are quite a few um, families at Beulah Beach and families that we have come in contact with who have either adopted children or are foster parents. This is for the mom in that family. And it's a specific weekend that we will be really showing love and giving them tools as they navigate through things that many of us have never navigated. Um, as they've had another child enter their home in this way. Wet and Wacky Wednesday is when a thousand grade schoolers come for the day. And again, if you're not on that front strip by the lake, you might not even know it except for all the cars coming in. But just a lot of fun um, watching these kids um, really learn about who Jesus is and have fun at the same time. And then we do it for the teens. This is called Tidal Wave. This will be an event in July. And we'll have seven or 800 high schoolers, junior high and high schoolers come. Now, this is one I'd love to invite all of you. This is our auction this year. Every year, the Saturday before Memorial Day, we have an annual auction. This year, we are raising money in order to restore Bethany. Now, <clears throat> Wally, did you, sh one of you showed a picture of Bethany, and I think I heard some remarks like, ooh, that's kind of rough. Mm -hmm. Well, it still looks exactly the same. It was the same bed in the same mattress. I don't know how long it's been there. <laughs> and so it's past time for us to do something. They already have put siding and put new windows, and now we're going to winterize it and make it so that we can use that year round. Um, just two last things, we're going to Greece this fall with a group of people, and then I'd love to invite y'all to come if you ever wanted to go to the Holy Lands. Um, the, other Holy Land. the other Holy Land, yes. Um, we would love for you to join us. We'll be going in 2018. I went several years ago. It changed my life. I will never read the Bible the same again. Um, when I open it up and I read and I see it, and I said, it's like this. When you read it first, I felt like I was reading in black and white, and now I read in color. Mm -hmm. So you would be welcome to join us. So that's Beulah Beach. Now, I said I worked with outside groups. So a lot of people think that we are a summer camp, which we are but we are open year round. And we run an outdoor education program. And so for instance, Thursday, a school will come in, do all kinds of fun classes. And most schools come for two, some for three days. We last year had 187 different groups come to Beulah Beach. And we, I would say, we, this is how we classify a camper day is someone spending one night and eating three meals at Beulah Beach. Last year, we had 24,000 camper days, which is crazy, isn't it? Because that means our kitchen served 72,000 meals, which is a lot of food out of that little food service place. <laughs> yes. So in the summer, we can average, I would say the average is about four to 500 people on the camp at once. Um, just with all of our different, with our camps, the day camp, and then also with other groups that will come use the camp. I, like I said, work in guest services. My job during the summer is to make sure everybody has a place to sleep 
everybody knows when they're supposed to go eat, and not everybody is trying to swim at the swimming pool at the same time. <laughs> so that is what our office does, is just kind of really try to organize and keep everybody going where they're supposed to be going at the right time. So you might ask, well, what kind of group someone did ask? What kind of people come to Beulah Beach? <laughs> Most of the time, Nancy, they are nice. <laughs> Um, I find, let me just explain like the last 10 days. Last week this time, there was a high school, a senior class from St. Martin de Porras in downtown Cleveland there. And they were doing a fun end of the year senior class trip, as well as teachers really challenging them for the future. They left on Thursday and an outdoor ed group came in that same day. And they had their thing and they left on Friday and Friday, I had four groups come. I had a women's group from a Presbyterian church. I had a men's leadership from a church come. I had a youth group from Erie, Pennsylvania come. And I had an Ethiopian group from a church down in Columbus come in. So they all came. And then someone, I think Steve, you mentioned, we had the power lifters come. And they came in on Saturday, our, our, uh, the head of our kitchen, is really into powerlifting. I've never heard of this before in my life, but they had some meat at, our, at, the, at the camp this past weekend, so they were there. So amongst all that, then another group came in on Sunday, and they're a group of either missionaries or people from Vietnam that work with the Vietnamese church. So they're there. Now they're there till Thursday, and on Thursday they leave, and another outdoor ed comes in, and we'll run that till Friday, and Friday they leave, and Case Western University arrives with 160 of the people who are going to be their resident directors next year and their leadership. So you can see it just starts rolling, and one group after another, and very, very different types of groups. We have youth groups and men's groups and women's groups and families come. We have young adult groups. We have a lot of boards from churches come. We do marriage retreats, pastor retreats. My son himself was ordained at the camp last year when they had a, a church group there. We have several high schools that will come do either beginning of the senior year or end of the senior year. A lot of them, their seniors come. We have athletic teams come. We have some of my favorite people that come are the AA 12-step people. And we have one group of a mixed 12-step that comes about every three months. And then we have a men's group of 180 men that come. My husband always says, Ralph says, how do they get them to come? They sleep on, they sleep like sardines in there. But they know what they need and it's just so awesome to see them supporting one another. And we also have a women's group from there. We have missions groups like this year. We have a lot of universities that use the camp. Bowling Green comes, uh, Cleveland State, Case Western, a lot of groups like that do a lot of their leadership development at the camp. And then one thing we do offer um, to any pastor is that they can come and spend two nights in one of our cottages at no cost for a personal, um, just a personal retreat. They often need to get away and we feel like that's one way that we can offer something to them personally. Wally showed you, I, Walter, Walter <laughs> showed you our mission statement. We often would say our mission, or our goal, as some might say, is that we want all of our guests to somehow encounter Christ. And there's just nothing that makes me want to do what I do more than knowing that that's what I'm working for, that whoever comes, that I can be the hands of Christ to someone who comes. And so that is Beulah Beach today. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Steve. Any questions for any of us? On the tables, there are displays, old pictures, medium old pictures, some souvenir things that have been uh, made over the years. I only brought one out of the vast collection of Beulah Beach t-shirts. 
Uh, there's a one long portrait. There are a bunch of those we have. We, I only brought one. I also have a note there. It says, see if you can find Reverend Miller on this end and Reverend Miller on this end. He was very good at being at both ends of the pictures. Hi there. Thank you. Thank you to Steve and to Kathy and to Walt. Very, very interesting.